Who means you? <laughs> it's a t-shirt I can give quite a few people in my life. It's one up and walled off. Who needs you? I don't need this crap. Or as my kids used to say to me uh, in those warm, familiar moments, hey, dad, Talk to the hand because the face don't give a damn. I'm going to talk to you today about withdrawal, which is really never, ever going to get you more of what you want in your relationships. Hi, I'm Terry Real. I'm the founder of Relational Life Institute, and I'm here today to teach you a little bit about how to live relationally uh, on this planet, which is a lot more than your culture teaches us, or as my pal Esther Perel calls it, that a school of relationship called your family. How many of us withdraw? And when the times get tough, the tough get going. I'm out of here. Uh, there's that great Charlie Brown a cartoon. His wife is like, his wife is my edible slip. His mother is like, you know, two, two stories towering above him. Charlie, is he doing homework? I'm trying. Is he come on? I'm trying. And his thought bubble is wall, 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 wall. I am taking in nothing. Thank you very much. Save your breath. This is called a wall. And it's the five, uh, fifth losing strategy of the part of you we call the adaptive child part of you, the part of you you adapted growing up uh, to preserve yourself. Good then, not so good in your relationships uh, now. Withdrawal is the fifth losing strategy of the adaptive child. Controlling, uh, being right is the first one. Of course, I'm right and you're wrong. Controlling your partner, I would be happy if only you would. Unbridled self-expression, let me tell you all, all about uh, every nook and cranny of how miserable I am with you. Retaliation, uh, let me hurt you the way you hurt me. And the fifth one, withdrawal. I'm out of here. And you could be sitting a la Charlie Brown, six inches away from uh, somebody and still be withdrawing. That's called stonewalling. Uh, it's one of the great predictors of divorce, according to researcher John Gottman. I'm not uh, listening. Now, a wall uh, is different from a boundary. And many people who operate behind walls think that if they take the wall down, they'll be boundaryless and unprotected. But that's not true. Antidote to a wall is a more supple form of protection. I'm given a whole course on what appropriate boundaries are. But a good boundary will leave you protected and connected at the same time. You're sifting through what your, uh, the listener, uh, what the speaker is saying to you, and you're asking yourself, is this true for me, not true? Uh, you're taking in what's true and leaving out what isn't. But you're engaged, you care. But when you're behind a wall, when you're withdrawing, uh, you ain't listening to nothing. You, you can be there, but there's zero receptivity. You're protected, but you're an empty fortress. You're protected, but there's no connection at all. And of course, the person on the receiving end of that it will feel that. Now, some people literally withdraw, storm out of the room, this conversation's over, I'm out of here. And let me say, I actually don't mind people taking distance from one another. If you're hot in the heat of the moment, if it feels overwhelming to you, or you're about to lose your wise adult and say something stupid, or you just feel like there's too much coming at you and you're overwhelmed. Fine, take a break. I'm a big fan of breaks, but breaks are negotiated between the partners. They're not unilateral and you don't leave in an angry huff and you don't leave from a one-up judgmental position. And I, who needs this crap on it? out of here is not a constructive way of taking distance. So we teach the skill of what we call responsible distance taking. There's unilateral provocative distance taking, which is the losing strategy of withdrawal. I'm gone. And then there's mature relational distance taking. Responsible distance taking has two parts. One, I'm taking distance. Here's why. I'm feeling overwhelmed. Fair enough. Or I'm getting uh, reactive. Uh, I need some space to get centered. Or it's going on too long. I 
10 minutes I've forgotten. This has been going on for two hours, I'm thinking. But it, whatever the reason, here's why. Here's when I'm coming back. So I want to talk about little Timmy. Well, it's 11.30 at night. I'm dog tired. Uh, this is not a good time. But let's talk about Timmy over breakfast. Here's why I'm tired. Here's when I'm coming back tomorrow at breakfast. And you damn well better show up at breakfast and say, let's talk about Timmy. If you don't, then you're playing games with your partner and they won't let you go because they know you're never coming back. So no, here's why and here's when. Or no, withdrawal. Anytime you say no, that's a form of distance taking. You want to play tennis? No. Want to make love? No. Want to talk? No. Uh, no, here's why and here's what my yes looks like. You, you want to see the new Arnold Schwarzenegger shoot em up movie? No. Uh, how about uh, the new Anne Hathaway? Yeah, sure. You got it. Okay, good. No, uh, here's, uh, here's why and here's what my yes would look like. So there's always a coming back. There's a difference between a break and a rupture. And if you take care of your partner, here's why I'm taking the break and here's when I'm coming back, or here's why I'm saying no to this offer, but here's an offer I would take. Then they'll leave you distance. I say this all the time. If you want to uh, take distance, let me teach you how to do it in a way that actually <laughs> might have a snowball chance in hell of getting it for you. If you take a unilateral distance, I'm out of here. The odds are very good. The person on the receiving end of that is going to get anxious, feel the indefiniteness of it as a rupture, and then whatever abandonment issues or whatever they feel, and they'll come after you, uh, sometimes uh, pretty angrily. So, uh, hey, if you really want distance, let me teach you how to do it. But uh, that's a responsible negotiation. Withdrawal is not. Withdrawal is shut down. I'm gone. Too bad. And all of these losing strategies are attempts to preserve ourselves, protect ourselves, do something, self-care. Uh, when I feel overwhelmed, I'm gone. But you may have needed that as a child. It's not a good way to work your intimate relationship uh, as an adult. I want distance. Here's why. Here's when I'm coming back. The adaptive child part of us is uh, either a reaction to what we live with or modeling what we live with, or most often an amalgam of both. But there are two ways to come by a prevailing losing strategy of withdrawal. One is uh, you grew up in a family where everybody was behind conflict was really terrible. Sharing your feelings was a burden, poor taste. So everybody was what I would call a love avoidant in your family. And you grew up to think that that kind of avoidance was normal. You have to take a breath and sell yourself on the very concept of intimacy, particularly when things get hot or messy. Uh, hey, you want to live behind walls? Great. Go ahead if you live in a cave, but you'll never be intimate emotionally. And if you have a partner and a bunch of kids, your withdrawal hurts them. Let me say that again. If you live by yourself, withdrawal all you want. Uh, but if you choose to have a family, not only is that a losing strategy for you, but it does damage to the people around you. It's not responsible. Lean in and deal with one another. And if you can, a lot of people stop trying to deal with one another because when they do, it doesn't go very well. Okay, learn some relational skills, drag your partner to a YouTube channel like this or one of my classes or a boot camp weekend that we offer and learn how to do it better if nothing works. That is a kick out that you and your partner probably need some help with a good therapist and Good therapist and not always that easy to come by. So um, my hope would be you go to a relational life therapist. Go to my website. We have certified therapists all over the world now. So you may need help in being successful with one another. And to give you your due, a lot of people withdraw uh, because when they do try and deal with one another, it doesn't go very well. But the answer to that is not to give up. The answer to that is to find a way to 
be more successful when you lean in to each other and let someone teach you how to do that. Withdrawal. You will never get more of what you want by withdrawing. Many of us who lean on withdrawal come from families where that was normal, but moving into true intimacy moves us beyond uh, many of the cultures that we uh, grew up with. So one way of withdrawal being your favorite move is you grew up with it. It's part of your family, maybe part of your culture. Another is the opposite. Uh, that you grew up with one or both parents who were intrusive, exploitative. You were a surrogate spouse or a confidant, or a hero child, or a scapegoat child, could be either. And you were boundary violated. Uh, you were intruded upon or exploited or used in some way. And so your fear uh, is suffocation. Uh, you're not afraid of closeness. You're afraid of being used. It's true for a lot of men. Uh, many of you have heard me say this. People say that men are afraid of intimacy. I don't believe that men are afraid of intimacy. I believe that many men don't know what intimacy is. In the one-up, one-down world of traditional patriarchy, men read intimacy being demanded upon, being challenged by somebody as suffocation, uh, as being dominated. And I have to teach them about healthy yielding, which is not in many men's uh, vocabulary. So we withdraw when we grew up with intrusion. It's a one-two punch. Uh, but remember this, you will never get more of what you want by leaving the field. Take a breath, learn about boundaries, protect yourself, but in a more relational way. Lean in, as they say, and take the issue on. Take your partner on, but with skill. If it doesn't work well, learn better skills. If it still doesn't work well, get some help uh, with an outside coach or therapist. But don't throw up your hands and just leave. It is one of the great predictors of relational failure. I want you to live in a withdrawal-free zone. Take space, take a break. You can even take, if you're a very hot couple, formal timeouts. I have a one-pager on how to do that on my website. Breaks are good. Timeouts are the antidote to uh, reactivity and emotional violence. They take time for what we call relational mindfulness to get re-centered in that thinking part of you when you're flooded with reactivity. All that's good, but negotiated with your partner up front and not indefinite and interminable and unilateral. I'm out of here. I don't need this crap. Is not a way of handling yourself well in your relationships. Learn to do better. I'm Terry Real. Thank you for your time and interest. Uh, if you found this helpful, uh, be, please subscribe uh, to this YouTube uh, channel, and uh, I'll tell you a whole lot more about what I've learned over 40 years uh, for free. So can't beat that. Hope to see you. Be well.